Landing page load time is not a problem that comes up often. Your site needs to meet a minimum threshold of page load speed. As long as it does, you've got nothing to worry about. Once again, there's no hard number for the minimum requirement, but if your site is loading normally, don't worry about it any further. If your site is excessively sluggish, talk to your hosting provider to figure out what's up. Spider ability is another factor that is usually a non-issue. Google's programs that read and index your site are called spiders. If Google can't access or read your site, they won't know what your site's about. Your robots.txt file tells the Google bots what to read or not to read. If your site was set up by a competent developer, chances are your site is spiderable. If you're using a website builder like Squarespace, WordPress, Wix, Weebly, etc., they create and submit the robots.txt file automatically for you. If you're still unsure about your site's spider ability, create or log into your free Google Webmaster Tools account and you can check on your robots.txt file and see how it's being treated by Google's bots. Transparency won't be an issue as long as you don't do anything mischievous on your site. If you have a privacy policy, make sure it's easily accessible. Don't automatically sign up your visitors to a newsletter list without their permission and definitely don't auto install any software or alter their browser settings. I'm sure none of you will have any transparency issues. Navigability simply means that there's more to your site than just the landing page, which tells Google that the user will likely have other ways of finding the information they're looking for, like submitting a form, for example. Google used to require a fully navigable site with links to a Contact Us page, an About Us page, and so on and so forth, but with the advent of single page landing pages designed for conversions, this factor of landing page quality has become less and less important. Lastly, it's worthwhile noting that while landing page quality is generally the least important factor in determining quality score, landing page violations could easily cause your ads to be disapproved, which isn't the case with a low CTR or ad copy relevance. So be careful. Submitting your site for a review each time it's disapproved is not only a headache, but multiple infractions could lead to your account being suspended. Now that we know the factors that make up each keyword's quality score, it would be nice to know exactly what percentage of a quality score each component accounts for. Unfortunately, there's no definitive answer, but it's generally agreed upon in the industry that CTR accounts for roughly 65%, relevancy factors for about 25%, and the remaining 10% is allocated to landing page factors. Just to review, the CTR portion of quality score includes ad, keyword, click-through rate history, which looks at the historical click-through rates for a given keyword and ad combination account CTR history, which takes a broader look at all the keywords and ads in an entire account, display URL click-through rates, which takes into account the differences in click-through rates across your various display URLs in an ad group, and geographical CTR, which takes into account how your keyword and ad click-through rates perform in different geographical locations. Again, some of these factors are only reflected in the real-time quality score assigned at the very moment of a Google search and not necessarily accounted for by the quality score number we see in the actual account dashboard. Relevance factors include keyword to ad relevance, which again is how reflective your keywords are to the content of the ads in the ad group. Keyword to query relevance, which again is how related the keyword that triggered the ad impression is to the actual query the user typed in. Remember using match types to help here and keyword ad copy to landing page relevance, which once again is how relevant the keyword that triggered the ad and the text of the ad is to the topics discussed in the page users land on after clicking the ad. Lastly, we have landing page factors, which as we discussed, deal with more technical matters like load time, navigability, spider ability, and transparency. People always ask me what a good quality score is. Like with click-through rate, there's no real answer to that. Depending on any given circumstance, optimizing for quality score may not be the most important thing, and we'll talk about those instances in a moment. There are, however, reliable guidelines you can use when assessing the health of your quality scores. As we know, quality score is rated on a 10-point scale. You can have a quality score lower than 1 or higher than 10. If you're seeing quality scores of 1, then you're really in trouble. Chances are you're not really getting any traffic, and if you do, the costs per click will be astronomically high. We'll talk more about the relationship between CPC and quality score in a little bit. In most cases though, you'll wanna get rid of these keywords right away. Before deleting them, make sure everything is in order with your landing page or website. Oftentimes, there's a major landing page issue that's causing the one quality scores. Keywords in the two to three range are still bad, but they're salvageable in many cases. 
Costs are still significantly overpriced, and having a lot of keywords with two to three quality scores can hurt the overall quality score of the account. Spend time on these keywords, especially if they're highly integral keywords that you can't do without. It's not at all uncommon to see a lot of fours, fives, and sixes, especially during the first few months of a new account. You're not significantly overpaying, and you're not in any danger of being penalized. These keywords have real potential, and you should dedicate the bulk of your time optimizing them to improve their quality score. It often takes a few minor tweaks to get these keywords back on track. A quality score of 7 should be your benchmark goal. A keyword at 7 or above is above average, and you'll be saving money on cost per click. Don't kill yourself trying to improve keywords with a 7 quality score. Oftentimes there's a roof that you simply can't get past based on your industry and other geographical factors. 8s and 9s aren't as common as 7s and 10s, believe it or not, but if you're seeing them, then great. No need to do anything more in terms of quality score for those keywords. Obviously, 10 is the most coveted quality score. You're scoring close to perfect in Google's eyes on all fronts, and you could be confident that your CPCs are at rock bottom for your given position. Of course, if your quality score is a 10 and you're paying an average of $2 for position 3, an advertiser at position 5 or 6 could very likely be paying less than you. So now you have a really good understanding of quality score, what it is, how it works, all the different relevancy factors, and how much each relevancy factor is weighted when it comes to the overall quality score. With that understanding, we can now jump in to add rank figuring out how ad rank is calculated, but more importantly, really figuring out exactly how your actual cost per click is calculated. And that's gonna be a really exciting um, and in-depth um, area of knowledge that you're gonna get in the very next video. So stay tuned, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon right in the next video. Talk to you guys soon.